Welcome to Basaganang Trip. I'm your host, Lelo Claudio. I teach history at De La Salle University. Again, if you want to get in touch with me, if you have any comments, or if you want to troll me, you can just tweet me at Lelo Claudio on Twitter. Speaking of trolling, what I want to talk to you about today is something that is intimately connected dun sa buhay ng mga troll. At ito yung akusasyon ng bias. Para sa troll, maging Pro Duterte troll, most of the time, or sometimes, mga dilawan na troll, kagaya ko, dilawan, uh, sinasabi na yung kalaban nila sa internet ay bias. Ngayon, pag tinatawag akong bias, alam niyo ba kung ano sinasabi ko? Sinasabi ko, of course, I'm biased for the simple reason that I'm a human being. So, I don't like Duterte, I have a bias against Duterte, and that bias comes from the fact that I don't like somebody with authoritarian tendencies. I don't like somebody who says things that are wrong with human rights because my bias is for democracy, and my bias is for human rights, so I'm biased against Duterte. Aminan na lang. Now, this is what I do to deal with trolls. But I think, gaya na nabanggit ko sa isang recent thought leader's piece, na ito ay isang bagay na pwede ring gawin ng media. Ang tanong ko today is, why should the media be biased? Hindi lamang sa mga op-ed, hindi lamang sa opinion pages, kundi kahit sa sarili nitong reportage, dapat meron itong bias. And you, as usual, meron tayong mga sub-questions na naka-associate with this big question. Yung unang sub-question natin is, can the media even be objective to begin with? Now, a lot of people say it's simple. The media can be objective simply by reporting the facts and just the facts, as if that were such a clear process. In media studies, we have two terms. Yung una yung tinatawag natin priming at yung pangalda tinatawag natin framing. Yung priming ay yung pagpili ng mga particular stories. And yung pagpili mo ng particular stories ay may kinikilingan na nabayas. For example, you can report something objectively, but if you report it all the time, then that means that may pagkiling ka dun sa issue na yun. So for example, if you're a newspaper and you're always reporting about EJK, right? Even if objective, objective yung pagkakasulat mo nun, simply na report mo yun, meaning, meaning ginagawa mong issue yun. At yun ay isang pag, pag, pagkiling. Yun yung tinatawag natin na priming. Yung isa pa yung framing. For example, madalas sa mga kwento sa newspaper, lagi na quote ang bayan muna. Lagi na quote ang kaliwa, ang mga militanting grupo. Ito ay isang paraan already ng pagbibigay ng boses sa kanila. At kahit kinukot mo lang yung sinasabi nila, wala kang sinasabi. Kung lagi mo silang kinukot, edi eh may pagkiling na yung report mo doon sa perspective sa ini, ng spokesperson ng bayan muna or ng bagong alyansa makabayan. So, it is impossible to completely be objective dahil maraming layers ng framing and priming na ginagawa ang media. At yung pangalawang dahilan kung bakit it's impossible to be completely unbiased or impartial is because tao rin ang mga reporter at mga opinion writer. Meron, dumadama sila, nagagalit sila, meron silang emosyon. Hindi sila para mga robot na pinoproseso lang yung information at saka binubugang it, ang mga ito. Naisip nyo ba na maging ang mga reporter natin ay bumuboto rin? Naisip nyo ba na ang ating mga reporter at ang ating mga editor, pag nakikipagkwentuhan sa pamilya o sa mga, ka ma ma mga kaibigan, may opinion din tungkol sa buong mundo. Hindi yun nawawala simply because sa harap sila ng computer nila nagsusulat sila ng kanilang story. The second sub-question I want to answer here is, has media always been impartial. Actually, this is not true. Naging impartial lang ang media at least, or nag-strive nag, nag for impartiality lang ang media at least in the United States noong 19th and 20th century nang mapansin ng mga newspaper na kailangan nila ng advertising. Ngayon, kung kailangan mo ng advertising, mabuti sabihin mo na wala kang kinikilingan para pwede kang tumanggap ng pera mula sa taong ito yung pinaniniwalaan at isa pang advertiser na iba ang pinaniniwalaan. So, lalaki ang iyong revenue stream. But before that, actually, most U.S. newspapers explicitly identified their biases. May mga newspaper na Democrat, may mga newspaper na Republican, at itong tradisyon na to ay nabubuhay pa rin sa United Kingdom or sa Britanya hanggang ngayon. You have a newspaper like The Economist, and The Economist believes in free markets and liberal democracy. You have a newspaper like The Guardian, which is a center-left, also liberal newspaper. And you have a newspaper like The New Statesman, which explicitly calls itself uh, a progressive newspaper. But we don't really have to look far to ask 
kung saan ba may bias media. Naalala nyo ba yung La Solidaridad? Some people think that La Solidaridad was the first ever Filipino newspaper because it is the first newspaper written by people who explicitly identified as Indio and Filipino at the same time. If you read the articles written in the late 19th century in La Solidaridad by people like Marcelo del Pilar, Graciano Lopez Haina, and Jose Rizal, lahat nito mga to ay pawang mga op-ed. Wala sa kanilang nagpipure reportage lamang. At inaamin nila na sila ay may pagkiling towards uh, reforms in the Philippines, kagaya ng representasyon sa Cortes. Meron silang pagkiling sa human rights and liberal policies in the Philippines. So, tatawagin ba natin silang less of a journalist? Sasabihin ba natin na itong mga to ay walang credibility dahil bias sila? Naku naman, I think may credibility si Jose Rizal at saka si Marcelo del Pilar kahit bias sila. So, next question. What does a biased media look like? What kind of proposals will lead to a biased media that is also honest? Well, I have two. Unang-una, media outfits or news outlets should state explicitly kung ano yung mga prinsipyo nila. A couple of paragraphs saying ito yung pinagagalingan namin, ito yung aming ideological position, similar to what political parties do. At dahil dito, nagkakalinawan yung relasyon between the newspaper and the reader. Huwag pupunta yung reader sa isang website expecting something, knowing na yun naman yung posisyon ng media outfit. This is what the New Statesman does. This is what the Economist does. And I think media outfits like Rappler, Inquirer, Manila Times should do this as well. Pangalawa, I think media outlets should consider endorsing candidates during elections. Napansin nyo ba na karamihan ng mga US, uh, mga US newspapers ay nag e ng mga candidates. So for example, the New York Times endorsed Hillary Clinton. In fact, most US newspapers endorsed Hillary Clinton. And what this does is that it again sets an expectation for the reader na ito yung pinagagalingan namin, yung reports namin may particular na pagkiling, read it knowing this as a reader, and this informs you better as to kung ano yung pinagagalingan ng newspaper. Yung huling tanong, ano ang benepisyo nito? Ang benepisyo nito ay ito. I think a lot of Filipinos have gotten cynical. That's why a lot of them accuse the media of being biased. Bias kayo, wala kayong objectivity, basahin nyo lang si Mocha Uson. And I think what people like about Mocha is that Mocha is explicit about her biases. Pag pumunta ka sa site ni Mocha Uson, sasabi niya, ako ay pro-DDS blogger. There's no pretense there. Whereas the media, a lot of them pretend like they have no biases when in fact they do have biases. So what I think this does is that it makes the expectation between the, the reader and the media practitioner clear. Meron tayong relasyon based on the fact na nagkakaaminan tayo kung saan tayo nanggagaling. At ito ay hindi form of deception. In fact, this is a form of honesty. Because since human beings cannot get rid of their biases, the sign of good faith that the media practitioner can show to his or her audience is, ito yung pinanggagalingan ko, take it or leave it. So, not only will it reduce trolling, because now when they claim that the media is biased, the media can just go, well, yeah, we already told you that. But secondly, it is a sign of good faith that tells the reader, may pinanggagalingan ako at respetuhin mo yung pinapanggalingan ko kasi re-respetuhin ko rin yung pinanggagalingan mo. So ano yung trip na gusto nating basagin this week? Very obvious. Ang media po ay hindi parang pare na merong vow of objectivity na nawawala yung kanilang pagkatao simply because meron silang press badge. Ang media pa rin ay mga tao, may mga opinion, nagagalit, may emosyon, may pinanggagalingan. Allow them to draw from these emotions and I actually think we'll have better reporting. Thank you very much.